And there are just no two ways about it. This week was just terrible for journalism. My colleague John Berman said it best. It was a shock to the system. I and mean, let's think about it. On Monday, a familiar face went missing. Brian Williams, absent from NBC Nightly News, America's most watched nightly newscast. On Tuesday, Williams was suspended without pay for six months with no guarantee he will ever return to the chair. That same night, John Stewart announced that he's going to sign off from The Daily Show, which he's been anchoring for even longer than Williams has been anchoring NBC Nightly News. Stewart's fans, mostly liberals, felt like they had lost a true anchor. Then on Wednesday night, the legendary 60 Minutes correspondent Bob Simon died in a car accident on the way home from work here in Manhattan. He had just finished a story that will air tonight. And on Thursday night, my friend David Carr died. David was the man who knew all these men, who covered them all, who held them all to account. David helped us and helped them understand the revolutionary changes that just keep coming, coming, coming in the media industry. David was the wisest, most wired media reporter in this country. His Monday column was the definition of a must-read. And he collapsed in the New York Times newsroom that he loved so much. David used to say, I just want to get in the boat and row. He just wanted to help cover the big stories in the world of media. So today we will pick up an oar. We will try to row without him. And I'm joined by the best person to make sense of all this week's news, Carl Bernstein, one half of the Woodward and Bernstein team that exposed Watergate to the world. And Carl, I wanted you to join me on the set today because we've been talking about all of these stories and how they're all connected. Uh, and they're all very different. They were talking about deaths, suspensions, or retirement. But it seems to me that what connects all of these stories uh, is the word trust. Trust is a big part of it, and also the concept of the best obtainable version of the truth, mm. which really is what good reporting, good journalism uh, is about. And in all of these people we're talking about understood, including Brian Williams, the ideal of the best obtainable version of the truth. And I think this week gives us a chance, uh, in all the horror, uh, an opportunity to look again at who we are, what it is we do, and also maybe mm. to throw away some of the sanctimony that we've kind of had washing over us this week. There's been too much sanctimony, too much uh, holiness about what it is we do. Mm. Uh, we should talk about that a bit too. Well, tell me what you mean uh, by that. I mean that the best obtainable version of the truth is an ideal. Uh, we don't meet it mm. as often as we should. There have been failures by NBC News, not just Brian Williams. Right. Right. Uh, here uh, we have in John Stewart somebody who really understood the best obtainable version of the truth. You think so? Even better, though people much, call him a fake much, news anchor. Much better uh, than the evening do news on all three networks mm. often does. And maybe we'll take a look at that. Because yeah. what he was able to do was to pick out what was really important, what was core, put it up there with videotape and say, look at this, America, look at this evening news. You just went right by this, right. and this is what counts. And we often do not understand what counts. We kowtow to the demographic. Look at the evening news. Let's talk about that. We got a lot of time. Uh, the evening news is not really, on any of the networks, is not really about the news uh, as it should be. What's so it about then? It's about satisfying a demographic. It's, look, also, we are all in the entertainment business. That's what I meant about the sanctimony. Mm. We're all performing up here to an, to an extent. The question is, can we do the performing? And obviously our audience, and, and look at entertainment. A newspaper is an entertainment. It has comics. It has great feature writing. It has sports. Nothing David wrong, Carr was very nothing funny. Nothing yeah. wrong with, yeah. with entertainment. But yeah. our core purpose, the best obtainable version of the truth, can we stay fixed on that, have fun, mm -hmm. be entertaining, not be sanctimonious about ourselves? We're not judges. Uh, we're not meant to be the judiciary and pass judgment on every, everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's time to, to lower the temperature about ourselves, to look at ourselves with some, some real introspection. Uh, this is a great occasion to do it, particularly mm -hmm. because in David Carr, in Bob Simon, uh, in uh, The Daily Show. We have some real examples of people who understood news and what is good news. So let's talk about that. We're also describing sort of the blurring of the lines between news and entertainment, because The Daily Show, John Stewart always would say, he's just a comedian, just performing some satire. 
but so many people perceived it to be more than that. And, and, and so many people in my generation learned real news from it, took away real news from it. At the same time, Brian Williams is being criticized and he's, he's been befallen partly by going on late night talk shows and entertaining people Look, and seeming sillier than his nightly news job. We've all, not all, but many of us have been on late night talk shows and, and, and let's not forget that. Uh, the question is, what is the core thing that Brian Williams was expected to do? Mm. It was to be truthful. Uh, and so the trust that you're speaking of that has been lost is because he undermined his reputation for being truthful. Uh, that's where we got to keep looking at what is it that, that we're about and incidentally truthfulness is not just about delivering a set of facts it's about context that again goes to John Stewart goes to Bob Simon's reports mm. on 60 Minutes goes yeah. to what David Carr understood so well about what the elements of good journalism are what's the most important thing we do perhaps and again let's look at Stewart yeah. and let's look at the evening news we decide what is news. And I would say that Stewart's agenda is a far superior one in terms of what is news than the evening news shows today. And 60 Minutes, the New York Times, the Daily Show, they do all have agenda setting functions. And uh, we're going to explore that as the hour goes on. Um, but stay with me. I'm really glad you're here this morning. I want to dig a little bit deeper on the Brian Williams part of this because, I mean, think about this for a second. This is really an extraordinary situation. The nation's top TV news anchor, sidelined, and now some of his past claims are getting a lot of scrutiny including one about his time with SEAL Team 6. Here's what he has said in the past. This is once on NBC and once on Letterman. About six weeks after the bin Laden raid, I got a white envelope, and in it was a thank you note, unsigned, and attached to it was a piece of the fuselage, the fuselage from the blown up uh, Black Hawk in that courtyard and oh. I don't know how many pieces survived wow but I uh, sent to you by one of the yeah one of my friends Williams also said that he promised at the time he would never speak of what he saw on that aircraft what they were carrying and who they were after um, now there's been no definitive proof one way or another about those specific claims by Brian Williams but they're raising a lot of eyebrows in the SEAL Team 6 community and NBC is not commenting uh, Don Mann is a former member of SEAL Team 6 and he's with me now from Miami Sir, thank you for being here. Uh, you're welcome. You've spoken with some other SEALs as well. What do they say? What do they tell you about the possibility that what Brian Williams has been saying is true? Well, by all accounts, from any SEAL, any SEAL Team 6 member, anybody in a Tier 1 Spec Ops community, uh, it's unheard of. What Brian Williams is saying, none of it can be true. What, uh, for a reporter to be embedded with SEAL Team 6 or any Tier 1 unit, that just doesn't happen. The, 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 op the objectives of SEAL Team or SEAL Team 6 or any uh, Tier 1 unit is to conceal our faces, the Team 1 faces, the Tier 1 faces, their identities, the tactics, the techniques, the procedures, mm. the equipment they use. The last thing in the world we would want is to have a reporter sitting in a helicopter embedded with one of these units. It, it no, I wonder, did you ever notice him saying States this stuff at the ways. time? Because it's, it's sort of been hidden in plain sight, these allegations. Did you notice him at the time saying this stuff? No, I, 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 I have never heard of any, any, any reports at all or any accounts of Brian Williams or any reporter being with SEAL Team 6. Hmm. And now that we have uh, you know, seen all these sound bites and now that we've We've seen uh, that they can't be backed up. What would you like to hear from NBC? Because they're not letting Brian Williams really comment on these issues. Well, you know, Brian Williams can actually show that piece of the fuselage. He can show that piece of the tail of that stealth helicopter. He can, he can bring it on the air, and that would clear it up. Yeah. Well, you know, essentially mentioned no that. Do you mind if I just play a little bit of sound from him? Let me play a little bit of sound from him, because this is about the sure. souvenirs issue. Uh, Oh, actually, I guess we don't have it. But, you know, what you're describing is this other allegation from him that he, that he was given as a souvenir uh, part of the fuselage of the helicopter that crashed on the night that bin Laden was assassinated. Tell me about what, um, how, how, how could that be true? Let's give him the benefit of the doubt here. How could that be true? Okay, the SEALs went into a Badabad. They attacked the compound. They, they got bin Laden. They got his bodyguards. They got his son. They collected all this intelligence hard drives, 
computer information, a lot of documents. They ran out. The helicopter that was in the courtyard, they put a thermite grenade in it to destroy it so people can't get a hold of that technology, that stealth technology. And, and then, in the midst of all that, a SEAL would have to grab a piece of, the, a piece of that tail, bring it back with him, and give it as a gift. There's no way in the world that would happen. It, it would be criminal. Wow. That, it's so striking to hear you say that. Because here he was making these claims repeatedly, uh, and no one really pointed it out at the time. No, there, there are accounts of SEALs and other units like SEAL teams giving gifts, war mementos to presidents or CIA directors, but never to a reporter. A reporter's objective is in contrast to the military. The military has to conceal all of this. A reporter wants to expose everything that we're trying to conceal. The story doesn't match up at all. Well, Don, thank you for being here. Uh, Carl, I what do you think of what you're I want to try one here? suggestion here, and that is that NBC has a real obligation to publish the results of its investigation of mm. all of these claims, counterclaims, uh, to publish it in full, much like the Washington Post did after it had to return a Pulitzer Prize because it involved an invented story mm. by a journalist who was a fabulist who had made up the whole, the whole story. Uh, it is incumbent on NBC that we learn exactly what the facts are. What we do understand, I think, at this point is that, that Brian Williams uh, clearly was inventing some things. Uh, not necessarily on his air with regularity, but in some of these other public uh, appearances. And, and NBC also apparently was aware people in the newsroom we think we're aware of some of this and nbc needs to address its own procedures and what it knew and when it knew about these tendencies if they existed and their comment for now is no comment they say they want to get to all of it fact check all of it That's and then okay. address it but in the meantime there's this vacuum